that to do your communication. Okay, welcome again. My name is Scott Holohan. I'm the District 40 Public Relations Manager, and tonight I'm going to go over uh, how to create press releases for your club events. And this also uh, extends to the area and the division events as well. So, uh, for instance, speech contests, open houses, those types of things where you're trying to get the, the word out to the general public to invite new prospects, guests to your meetings or your events. Uh, three objectives. One, I want to introduce you to press releases. I'll provide some examples of different types of press releases, why they need to be a certain way. Uh, I'm going to also introduce you to the media lists that we've uh, received in the district. We've got great resources. Uh, we've also, I'm also going to provide an overview and a coordination of that process. So, uh, as I mentioned, this is going to go from the club level to the area level and then also the division level. So without further ado, uh, let me go into the, um, the process here, but let me uh, first, I think, let me go into this here. So what I'm going to do tonight on our Wednesday webinar is to, uh, again, just try to provide you a brief overview of this process. And I'm going to go to the next slide. So what one of the things that, that I want to just kind of get out there before I go into the actual step-by-step -step process that we're going to do for this is just to review some of the key points for creating and managing press releases. Uh, one of the things that we used to do in the past is that we used to, when we did press releases, they always came up to a person like myself in the district and, you know, they would always have to approve it. Uh, one of the things that we want to do is we want to try to teach you how to do press releases because really it's you that are controlling a majority of these press releases because you are going to be the ones who are promoting your event, your open house, or your speech contests. It's really you guys that are going to be controlling that and I want to try to provide you with some resources and tips to be able to do that effectively. We are going to train division reps. We've already, for about the past 30 days or so, we've reached out to the division directors to be able to get a division rep. So it's not always going to be on me to answer your questions. I'm going to do my best, and I do have an assistant who is going to do their best to train the division directors on any sort of questions that may come up at the club level or the area level so that there's uh, a good uh, a good amount of people who can help you with press releases and uh, like I said I've, I've I have some media lists that I've obtained from a, a very reliable source I've taken a look at them I think they're very comprehensive they're basically an Excel spreadsheet I'll show you some examples based upon uh, your location so Brian Larry and Tyler if you once we get to that point, let me know, maybe in the chat box there, if you can tell me what city that you're from. So if you're from Cincinnati or Columbus or Dayton, let me know the major metropolitan area that you're, uh, that you're part of. And we'll, uh, we'll go over some of those and I'll just kind of give you some tips on, on what to, what to, what to look for. Again, these lists, these media lists are going to be distributed to uh, the divisions. And what I'd like to do is to get it all to uh, even down to the club level, because these really, there's not anything proprietary about them. Uh, it's just information that I think you guys need to have. But the division reps will also have a copy of this as well. I'm going to go over the process uh, flow on the next slide. So I'll, I'll get into that and in some of the details. And then uh, if you have any ins issues or concerns with this process that I'm going to go over tonight, uh, I do have, besides myself, Scott Holohan, I do have an assistant. Uh, he's also here in Columbus. I know him very well. His name is Dr. Jung Jing. He is a DTM, and he's, he knows uh, a lot about newspapers because he's actually an editor for newspapers. So he's going to be uh, helping me try to get the word out to the divisions for supporting the, the press release process. 
So any concerns or questions up to this point, just at a very, very high level. Again, in the next slide here, I'm gonna go over the process. So any questions on these key points? Okay, looks like you guys are all from Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky, so that might make it easier. <laughs> So let me kind of give you a framework for what we're talking about here. So what kind of events are we looking at here? We're looking at club, area, division, and then I'm going to handle the district events, but uh, anywhere, any time you guys want to have an open house or a speech contest, or maybe you're just having a special event where you're inviting public, the public in, and that would typically be an open house. But if you're if you've got something that you'd like to uh, that you'd like to communicate to the press release or, or to the to the press. Uh, another good thing is to announce maybe a leader that's in that or in that area or like say for instance in the Cincinnati area you've got a, a dignitary or a set of dignitaries that are let's say the division directors that are a good uh, people to contact for information about Toastmasters. Uh, you can announce that to the press so that they can get an idea of, hey, if they've got any questions, uh, they can go and talk to this person. So there's a lot of different ways, and we'll talk about the ways that uh, you can communicate with the press here in just a minute. Uh, the second step of the process is really for you as Club VPPRs uh, to define your target audience. Really define your event information. You, we need, you know, specific information on where this is going to be held, when it's going to be held in terms of date and time, and why it's going to be uh, attended. Why is this event even happening? So it's really, uh, really good to get that information down, you know, making sure that you have all that necessary information. And then also have a, a, a list of target media contacts. So uh, the media that I'm talking about here on these press releases is television, radio, and newspapers. Those are the three key areas that I'm talking about tonight. And anything with regards to digital media like Facebook or Twitter or some other blog site or community site, that's out of the scope of this discussion tonight. I really, really want to focus on press releases because this could be a, a really good area for certain, for certain, um, certain geographic areas within the district. Um, make sure that and, uh, the, all the quality checkpoints are complete. We'll go over how to know what those are. I've already talked to you about some of those, the where, the when, the why. Those are quality checkpoints to make sure that they've got uh, we'll also take a look at some of the example press releases to see what they what they look like. And um, I do have some do's and don'ts down here, so let's maybe take a look at those. One of the things about a press release, really try to keep it to one page maximum. If you start sending additional pages of information, uh, the the media the media companies will probably just take a look at it and it's like, oh my gosh, this is way too long. I'm I'm going to ignore it. Um, and they may they may reject it, but they want something that's very concise, very clear, and it, to the point. So if you can keep it to one page max, that's great. Um, one of the things that when we get down to the to the nitty gritty details here, when you send a press release, make sure that you just basically do it in the text of an email. So bulk emails like Mailchimp or Constant Contact. When those get sensed by some of the uh, media servers or the media email servers, they may be blocked. Uh, there's a high risk of those being blocked because they're thinking that it's coming from some mass mass email send. So just make sure that when you do send these that it's to one media contact at a time and that it is not sent via a tool called like MailChimp or Constant Contact or some other mass uh, email app. There's quite a few don'ts in here. So one of the things that we want to make sure of is that we don't send multiple press releases of the same press release to one email. So just make sure that you're not overdoing it. One press release is fine. 
uh, don't send two or three just because you want to try to get it into the queue. Uh, that really won't help. Um, don't call the media company to see if they've received it. Um, only call them if they call you first. There is a possibility that the media company will be so in, uh, interested in your press release um, like say for instance if you've got just some really awesome open house or an, a speech contest that you're doing and people are intrigued by it they may call you and they may say hey can I show up can I come to your event and that would be awesome so just uh, if that does happen make sure that you have somebody that's prepared to uh, meet them greet them you know, answer any questions, uh, be prepared for maybe some of the questions that they might ask. I'm not sure exactly all of them, but just be prepared for what they maybe could ask. And just maybe just some basic stuff about your event. Uh, don't send attachments. So flyers, pictures, those types of things, that's not going to be very good for press releases. Once we, we'll take a look at some of the examples here. They're all text. They are all text. Uh, maybe except with, with a Toastmasters logo as part of the press release, but um, don't don't get caught up into uh, sending attachments to the uh, to the media companies. Uh, don't create any salutations. Don't just say dear so and so. Just send the press release. Just send it, um, and then don't copy the entire media list on an email. So in other words, if you want to send multiple or you want to send one press release to multiple uh, media companies like say for instance multiple radio stations multiple newspapers uh, it's best to send them one at a time don't copy a whole bunch of media companies on one email so that's that's inf that's important so make sure that you target wisely on the uh, so do target wisely i should say uh, i know it says target wisely in red, but you do want to target wisely. So again, don't CC the entire media list on an email. Um, so once you've once you've kind of done the quality checks that, that we've got here, uh, then you know your VP, you as a VPPR, your or your division rep is ready to send those to the media companies. And again, I'll go over uh, some of the uh, different uh, lists here and we'll we'll take a look at that. Uh, when you post them, you can also post them uh, these these press releases to other media sites. So these are more more on the social media side, the District 40 social media, digital media, if you will. Uh, we've got, you know, obviously our Facebook page. That's a that's a big part of what we do. Uh, there's there's a pretty good reach for that. Uh, that's really more for Facebook though. Is really more for internal events. Uh, you can publicize open houses on our Facebook page, it's okay because that is read by the public. Uh, they are able to access and see those. Uh, there's also a, a service out there that's not necessarily a formal media company, it's more of a blog site or a community site, uh, and that's called patch.com, patch.com. It's a free service, you can post your event uh, to the uh, to the calendar, the appropriate community calendar that that, that uh, of the uh, city that you're in, and you can use flyers for patch.com. So you, you so uh, that's kind of out of the scope, but there's additional resources that you can do. What I'm saying by the posting part is really that there's additional opportunities beyond the just the regular media lists or that you know for newspaper, TV, and radio. And then uh, the final step here is really more of a management perspective. So we really may need to make sure that the events are managed appropriately. So event organizers, if you're, uh, you know, hosting an open house, make sure that you are answering emails or answering questions that come your way, because uh, we want to make sure that you are being open, that you are being responsive to any inquiries about the event. If you go silent, they may think like, oh, they're not having it or they don't want me or anything like that. So it's really important to, to follow up with uh, any inquiries that come in. So that's kind of a, a general overview of the, of the process. I've got some other uh, things down here. So PR, the, the emails that you can use 
for myself and, and Jung Jing. And then I'm going to also, I'm going to go into this site here right now. I think uh, that's what I'm going to do next. Um, well, before I do that, let me uh, give you some tips here. So one of the things that I'm showing you here is a manual that Toastmasters.org puts out, and it is item number 1140, and it's entitled Let the World Know. This is basically a 48-page a manual for specific PR, public relations uh, uh, tasks. And so there's a lot of different things in here, but I really want to focus on section three. So if you want to really focus on that, get you want to get this manual as a VPPR, and you want to look at section three, and it has specific PR tactics to reach your target audience. So this is, it'll give you some really good examples of how to approach the media, how to get started. Um, I won't go through all this, but it'll give you tips on working with the media, you know, familiarize yourself with the local print, some of the broadcast networks, the shows, the programs. Um, you know, I've, I've got the main media representatives and how to contact them. I'll show you here in just a minute who we've got. And then it basically gets into how to write those pitches, how to write these press releases. So this is really cool about, you know, they're kind of giving you some ideas here or a kind of a structure to use. So I won't go into, like I said, the detail, but this is a really good way to to do it. You might see something in the salutation here, um, but really, uh, you really shouldn't get down to doing this uh, unless they ask you for some more information. But really, what we're trying to do is we're really trying to focus on this part here, and that's the actual press release. So I'll... I'll um, I'll go over that here in just a minute. I'll look at some sample newsletters and, and get to the media lists here in just a minute. So it kind of goes over here. Once you've received a response, like I said, make sure that you check. That's part of the manage the event. Make sure that you're checking your email frequently uh, for replies, either from the media contact or even from the general public and the, uh, themselves. So just make sure that you're doing that. If the media calls you, that's an awesome thing. That's an awesome opportunity for you to interact with the media so that you can build a rapport with them and, and really try to uh, promote Toastmasters uh, in, your, in your particular area or club. So it gives you some more information in here. Like I said, I won't be um, going through this, but um, uh, one of the things that they might do is they may call and interview you. Uh, that's what I mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, interviews are question and answer sessions with one or more of the media. If they call you for an interview, wow, what an awesome opportunity for you to showcase yourself and Toastmasters. So if you need any help with that, I can, I can probably give you some advice, to be honest with you. I've never talked to a media company, but I think there's some people in here in our division or our district who has. And we can uh, do our best to to make it as uh, a, as positive a, of an experience as possible. So uh, here's just some some special events. So here's just some more examples of different things I mentioned: contests, conferences. If you've got a really awesome guest speaker, like a, somebody who's famous, that's coming in to your club. I would put that out there because that may draw a whole bunch of people to your club. So this might be a great idea if you've got, you know, let's say if you're a Bengals fan, well, I don't know the Bengals aren't doing that great this year, but let's just say you got a pro football player or a pro baseball player from the Reds coming in to talk about their experience or maybe just provide some motivation. Wow, what an awesome opportunity to promote that event. A lot of people from the public may know them, and the media company may jump on that because they know that it's a famous person, and that might give Toastmasters some awesome press. 
like I said, for new officers uh, in terms of either club officers or area directors or division directors, this is a good opportunity for you to introduce yourself to the media uh, and to the public so that you can try to build a rapport with them. So this is these are just some ideas here as far as the different events that you could that you could promote. Maybe offer a free half day workshop on effective public speaking. Maybe you can do a special event where you're drawing people in. It's kind of like an open house maybe, but it's more of a special open house where you have somebody coming in to 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 teach how to do something. Maybe a speech craft. Speechcraft is a great way to introduce uh, some new people, guests to some of the structure that, that you have uh, and try to create a, a better public speaking environment and to train on how to speak better. So it kind of goes over some more tips and standards for success. Um, like I said, here's just some things here some different areas, quick lists of how and where to promote Toastmasters in your community. Uh, we're going to talk about newspapers, broadcast media. For the most part, that's what we're going to do. Um, they also go into some other ideas if you want to get outside of the, the press releases in terms of um, newspapers, radio, and television. There's some other places here that you can, that you can go to. So a whole bunch whole bunch of things. So here's another list of some do's and don'ts. I already listed a few of them, uh, and but there's a much more, uh, much more uh, expansive list here in the let you let the world know. So that's just the section that I wanted to show you. Um, let's go over some sample news releases. So this is in the Toastmasters.org website. This is also part of that. This right here. This TI website, some sample templates. So this is what we're going to take a look at. So this is where um, the club and or district can really get the recognition that it deserves. And this, uh, there's some different um, things here. All these releases are formatted. They're downloadable. All you have to do is basically type in your information about what your club is, where you're holding it, what time. Um, what, why you're doing it, just create some real flashy uh, things about the uh, uh, event as well. So let's do, let's say for instance, uh, you wanted to do a club open house. So I'm going to open up this here. Hopefully this will open up. And I am going to, I should be able to open this up. Might take a minute for me to open up my Word document. I'm going to pull it over to the thing here. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Just updated Word, so start using Word. I'm all set. Okay. Well, let's try that again. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to maybe blow this up just a little bit if I can. View, let me see if I can zoom, zoom a little bit more. Let's do, let's do 125%. So here is the media, here's a, a sample news release. So basically all you would have to do is to enter in any place that you see parentheses. So your club name, your city, your state, your country, date of the, the date that you're submitting it to the news, basically gives you an opportunity just to fill in those those things here, those these uh, these items here in parentheses. You can put your club website if you have one. That's a really good thing to, to put in there so that they can see what you're doing or see how your see how your club is. Um, so if you've got guest speakers, that sort of thing. Now there is some information down here at the bottom that is more the about. 
So you want to definitely provide, uh, and we can provide more information about this. So say District 40 comprises more than blank, and I can put in uh, more than, I think the a safe number is 175 clubs in, well, it says city, state, and province. That's more like we could probably put Ohio, Northern Kentucky, Northern West Virginia, and Southern Ohio. Kind of Southern Ohio, including Dayton, Columbus, Cincinnati. So I can, I'll create something here for, for the template. And then we have a district website here as well. And then this is a very common one about Toastmasters International all together. So this is a standard one that Toastmasters put on, puts on here. So it kind of shows the standard there. That's important to keep. And then there's there's these three hashtags that need to be a part of the press release. So it basically tells the media company that it's finished. This is the end of the media uh, press release. So this is like, for instance, this is one page. Um, it's a way for you to, uh, a fairly simple way for you just to fill in the blanks. Um, and like I said, I'll do my best to create a standard one or two sentence item around the district. Okay. So I guess any questions up to this point, any questions like on this type of press release or the process itself? If you guys want to unmute yourself, I think you can. So it seems like it's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward so far. And hopefully you've seen this particular website here on the sample news news releases. Um, there are, like I said, some additional additional types of news releases. So maybe somebody has um, maybe somebody has done some great things, some great work. Maybe they've achieved their DTM, and you want to give that to the newspaper. I mean, that's a great way to show what people are doing in the district or in your club, and it shows you know that people are doing stuff. Now that that would be great for a newspaper. So Larry, did you have a question? Yeah, I have a couple questions. Sure. One is you said don't send attachments, don't send photos. And right. um, now it's been a few years, um, been over 10 years since I had a different business set. Photos were very important. Oh, okay. And hmm. especially with, um, well, I was an artist, so especially for magazines or even newspapers, if I had photos already in their hands, they it, it ran much easier. Really, uh, was much more more likely to run than if I didn't. Now that's a different product, you know, mm -hmm. different, a whole different thing. But that's what I found back then, and what I'm hearing is, um, w what I'm curious about is, are you saying that the attachments make it? Uh, less likely to get through? Yes. Or is it? Yeah, the attachments make it less likely to make it through. I think that from an attachment perspective, they're a little bit curious about what's in the attachment. Maybe, you know, I think they're probably very, very sensitive about viruses. Um, in, a, in, a, in an email text, there's less of a chance to actually have a virus in that email than in an attachment. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been told that, uh, you know, especially by uh, several people who have a lot of media expertise that that attachments, um, you know, are really not something that the media accepts very easily. Now, I'm not sure about pictures. You might be able to embed pictures inside of the email itself. So if you're in an email program like just like Outlook or or um, or Yahoo Mail or something or or, or Apple Mail, uh, there's a possibility you can put like a little photo. I mean, logos are probably okay. The Toastmasters logo, I would think, mm -hmm. is probably okay. Um, but I would really have you point to photographs that may be on like your club website. And you can say, you know, take a look at the photos inside of our club website here, just to get a feel mm -hmm. for, to get a feel yeah, for how we how we run. Photos available at so at, yeah. yeah, 
that might be a better a better uh, uh, some better direction there. Yeah. Well, the other question I have um, I had already thought of in Cincinnati. We have there's a, a, a website called Cincinnati.com that um, you can post a, a press release on and more or less just write an article. You don't even have to follow every little bit of that. Okay. And uh, then it's available to all of the different media in Cincinnati. Mm, okay. Oh, wow. Somebody can pick it up. Now, I'm curious, how much is that like Patch, Patch.com that you just mentioned? Yeah, Patch.com is, is really, uh, it, it could be similar to Cincinnati.com. I'm not exactly familiar with Cincinnati.com and how that works. Um, um, that might be, it could be part of the media list. I haven't gone over to the Cincinnati media lists with a fine tooth comb yet, but let's take a look at that. They hold that question and see if Cincinnati.com is in that that list of media. And we'll we'll go into Cincinnati, obviously, because you guys are all from the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area. Okay. Let's take a look at that here momentarily. Brian or Tyler, any questions as far as press releases in general or the the process that I've described up to this point? No, I don't I'm okay so far. Okay, very good. All right, let's let's talk a little bit about. Uh, so I've shown you this uh, area where you can take a look at some other different templates and releases, like uh, a corporate recognition award. I guess depending on if you are a if you're from a community club that's an open club or public, uh, that would be you know something that you would go obviously to. Um, you know, the community, you'd want external people coming to your clubs. Now, if you are in a corporate club or a restricted club where you have to be a part of the organization or you have to be an employee of the organization, then that might be a little bit restrictive in terms of like for open houses. But maybe for, you know, something that says in this club, we had three people achieve DTMs or level five pathways education program or what have you. So that, that might be something that still can be uh, put in a newspaper somewhere and just says corporation, let's say, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of companies in Cincinnati, let's say Procter and Gamble or some something, we have a private club there or a restricted club. We still had three people from Procter and Gamble and you can list the names that just achieved a certain level within Toastmasters and the, you want to get that out and that would be perfectly fine. And it just kind of, again, it, uh, gives the excitement to uh, the public of what Toastmasters is all about. Uh, you may, uh, they even have like a sample uh, anniversary news release. So for instance, for a club to announce its anniversary, so 25 year anniversary, 10 year anniversary, five year anniversary, or maybe you're older, maybe you're 50 years old, or 40, uh, something you know where you could say, "Hey, our club turned X years old today," and you could use those you know increments of five or 10 or 25 to to help with that. So here's here's a blank news release. So this could be something you know just promoting something that's newsworthy. Uh, you can use that as well. So again, I won't go into the details here, but I, uh, I, I'll send this, uh, I'll send this slide deck out to you. It's pretty simple, and uh, make sure that you guys have a have a record of it. So I'll do that here afterwards. All right. So since we've got, uh, I, this is kind of my list of. So I'm going to go into Cincinnati area media lists, and hopefully this will be legible for you guys. Um, let me see if I can view it a little bit less here. Um, uh, so you can categorize <clears throat> or um, make a list by it. 
outlet type? Yes, yes, you can. So this is all in alphabetical order here. So I, I let me see how many total there are here. I, if I can take a look. Uh, so there's over 350 media outlets in the Cincinnati area because I'm I just basically highlighted everything in column A. Now, if you take a look at some of these, looks like they have got nine on your side. There's 11 p.m., 5:30, 5 p.m. So just send it. Um, uh, so if you want to if you want to target a certain time, you know maybe you know let's go over here. So let's there's a whole bunch of things here. Uh, it could tell you when you know Monday through Friday. Here's their website. Here's their address. Here's the outlet email. Most of it looks like it's got the same thing. So news desk at WCPO. And I think this is where it gets into don't send multiple emails, let's say to an 11 p.m. one or or in a 5 p.m. one or that sort of thing. But it's because it's all the same. I mean, it's all news desk at WCPO.com. Uh, you can go over here. You can get their number. if. But again, I think it's important that you'd not call them. If they have a question and they contact you, you at least have an opportunity to call them back here. And there's there's their outlet phone number. So there's also some uh, interesting profiles in here. Uh, for instance, it has a little bit more qualitative information with regards to the profile. I don't know. It's it's uh, this probably should be wrapped text wrapped. I think this is it here, wrap the text. So um, you probably, it's a, it might be a little bit difficult to read everything in this. But you can maybe able to do searches like, like I'm looking for a certain type of media. Um, let's say for instance, let's let's try to find like leadership or something like that. I don't know if leadership will be in here, but maybe it maybe it will be. So it looks like it found something here. So it looks like here it says publication of National Association for Family Education. This kind of sounds interesting. Um, strengthens individuals, families, communities through continuing education, developing leadership and community action, provides updates and news about the association. And then it says the circulation audience which does show in here the reach is potentially 15,000 people. So it tells you kind of an idea of the of the reach. And I think that goes into, there's another column here, right here, a column F goes through the reach numbers. This is the potential reach numbers that you're, that you're um, looking at. So this is, uh, this is really comprehensive. Um, there all sorts of stuff in here. There's magazines. There's, as you can see, it's like that's got like Expedite Now, and we wanted to look at Cincinnati.com, didn't you? Let's. I don't know if Cincinnati.com is in here. Maybe it is, but uh, let's see. Cincinnati Business Courier, Cincinnati Connection. I don't know if you guys recognize any of these here. The Cincinnati Enquirer, I think, is the one that created Cincinnati.com. Oh, okay. So let's see. Uh, we'll go over here. Here, here it is, right here. Exactly. There it is. So Cincinnati.com is the website. Um, I think this is the reach number here. Column F is that reach number. So 95,000 people. Wow. <laughs> so this might be a, an interesting you know, an interesting one to use. And here's their email address. So when you do a press release, send it to this email address. And then it goes over into, covers local, national, world news, eight counties in the greater Cincinnati area. It is just, yeah, so here it is. Uh, offers RSS really simple syndication. <laughs> 
this publication accepts advertising. The open ad rate is 371.50. So that, so this, these media lists are. Um, uh, so it's not uh, so all these are free in, in general okay just to send them something they're not going to charge you okay however if you want to do an advertisement then that's where they may want to charge you or they may get a hold of you and say okay if we want if you want to do an advertisement then it may cost extra over and above just sending it sending that to them like what we're doing here so one of the things that I want to make sure of that you're clear on is that when you send something to the media, they will put that. Uh, so the bottom line is there, you're not guaranteed to get your listing or your press release published. They will do what's called, I think, their best effort, quote unquote. So don't be surprised if nobody sees it. We, I, I think that they get, uh, I've heard some media outlets get thousands of press releases a day, depending on their size. They get thousands a day. And then there's people that are reviewing those and they're saying, okay, this one looks good. Let's publish this one. Uh, there's probably several that just don't make the grade. So make sure that, like I said, you're very clear, you're very concise, one page max, so that anybody who at a, at a very large media outlet is going to have a chance to take a look at it real quickly and say, wow, this seems intriguing. Let's put this up. So they're, they're not guaranteed or they're not guaranteed to be put up. So that's where it's important for you to be as clear and concise on what you're putting up. It looks like this uh, let's, This weekend circulation audience is 144,000. So if you're putting something up, it's probably like a newspaper. So if you're um, if you're wanting it to be put in somewhere uh, special, uh, they may they may ask for you know advertisements, or they may ask it, for, or they may require it to be an advertisement. But if you're just putting something very simple, then I would think that they would be able to put something like that in uh, in the newspaper for free. Um, so here's just like I said, there's uh, over 350 different media outlets here. Most of these look like that they are some sort of a newspaper. There are a few TV stations or radio stations in here. Probably not going to care too much about cooking with Maryland, right? <laughs> it's probably some sort of cooking food show, food show unless you were really stretching it with somebody. Um, then that's probably not a, you know, take probably not a good use of, of a press release for Toastmasters. Um, but just take a look at the different, you know, the different topics you know, like leadership or maybe even like public speaking. Let's see if there's something on public speaking. Maybe not, but let's take a look. You can kind of just public speaking. Okay, can't find anything. So let's just do speaking. Oh, Span Spanish speaking, visual market. Okay. So probably not, probably not what you were looking for. But you know, like I said, just it, it's really good to review these, just to see the market or the, the the demographic that you're working with. So there's so many of them. And I guess as you get down towards here, you're getting you're getting into the W's, and that's where probably radio stations or television stations. And then it looks like there's some online stuff here. Music, uh, it looks like there's music or something on there. Uh, looks like it's an oldie station. So, you know, so just like I said, just take a look at, you know, 
some of these lists. These I, I will send these to uh, not only yourself but also the division reps, so that they you guys are working from the same sheet of music. Now these media lists don't change. They 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 do change here and there. Um, as far as getting updates to you, uh, it's probably more like a once a year thing. We probably could refresh these once a year. Uh, we do we we do as as a district. Uh, the district pays for getting access to these media lists, and these media lists are supposedly updated. They're qualified, and it's something that um, uh, the district pays for, and anybody in the district can use it, down even to the club level. So we really want to utilize these lists as much as possible across the, all the all the major metropolitan areas in the district. So we have 11, I have 11 of them, and there are, I, I don't have them all in, this, in alphabetical order here, but I've got Charleston, Huntington, Lexington, Kentucky, so it can go down a little bit farther. There's Columbus, there's Delaware, Ohio, which is a little bit a suburb north of Columbus. There's Athens, Ohio, down near OU. There's Newark, Ohio, which is a little bit east of Columbus. Uh, Lima, which is north of Dayton, and then Dayton proper here. So I've got a list of of uh, 11 total that I can distribute, you know, by division. So obviously Cincinnati, you can look at Cincinnati, and then the Dayton people. I'll send it to the people in that division, and so on and so forth. That is really, I think, all that I wanted to to review tonight. I guess if you guys have any other questions or concerns, I'd be happy to answer them. So I will, so my deliverables here is to send you the PowerPoint. I'll send it to everybody who registered. I'm assuming that you all registered. I think you guys all did. I recognize your names from the from the registration list, so I'll make sure you guys get it. So just really takes some uh, takes a little bit of coordination. So if you have you know as VPPRs and maybe you can get a, a committee, like another like an assistant. So uh, Larry, I think you said you were a VP Ed. If you're looking to help, you know promote with your VP uh, PR or just help them in some way, shape or form, then we, you guys can use these lists and press releases, uh, cr draft them, create them, update them with your club, your club leadership. Sounds good. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm excited to really use these media lists because I don't think we've used them in the past several years. We haven't really distributed them down to the club level. And I think it's really important that we provide these resources down to the club level so that you can promote your, your events. We want to give you uh, my, my vision really as a VPPR is to or as a as the district PR manager is to give the clubs as many resources as possible so that you can find what's best for you. So digital media, you know, Facebook, if you use your website, uh, some people may Google you and find you that way. That's all really on the digital side, the social media side. I want to do more than that. I want to use the press. I want to use the TV stations. I want to use the newspapers and, and utilize those aspects because people still see those. They, they listen to the radio, they watch TV, they read a newspaper or a magazine. And so if we can get that to these people, maybe there'll, there's an opportunity to, you know, attract people, attract uh, potential prospects and guests to our meetings. So, so let me ask a quick yep. question on the media list. Um, yep. Once we have that, we can like um, sort through it and pick out the th the outlets that we want to use and, yes. and delete the rest and and say that as a separate file from the original. Yes. And we've got kind of a go to for at least a year. Is that would, would that make sense? I think the, a year is probably good for us to refresh. 
So maybe in the July timeframe, we'll refresh it again, July, August timeframe next year. Mm -hmm. Once we get a budget, I mean, we've got to go through the budget. That was the reason why I'm coming you in, to you in December. It's a little bit you know, halfway through the year. Um, this is really the sweet spot for when we need to start promoting. We, we're promoting for open houses. People should have, you know, the club officers should have some ideas. And as me as a district PR manager, I've got to figure out what's my strategy and what's my budget. And so I'm trying to, you know, define uh, what I'm going to pay for. I'm going to pay for this media list so that you guys can use it. Um, and I don't want you to, you know, spend your budget on something like this because uh, I think that's a waste. Um, this is this is really not proprietary at the district level. It can be used by anybody in the district. So yeah, use it. Uh, parse out what you don't need. Save it as a file in your your local files there. Uh, I would be careful on the distribution of this. Try to keep it inside your club. You know, and if you're sure. sending it maybe to another club, I guess that's okay. But uh, if, because if you have a sister club or a partner club, no problem with, you know, sending it to another Toastmasters club or a Toastmasters representative. Gotcha. Did that make sense, Tyler? Tyler's in my club, so that's oh, okay. why I'm asking him. Tyler, is it, does that make sense to uh, sort through it and get it, get it down to a manageable number and then keep that? Yeah, definitely kind of make it. Uh, make something that we can use as a go-to pretty quickly. Like yeah. Look. Yep. Yeah, I think that uh, the second one is the outlet subject. So column B, you know, you're looking at what's the subject? Is it general? Is you know, is it specific to a a certain demographic? Um, you know, we saw music or we saw um, you know automobiles. You can see that down there. Football. <laughs> Which one is that? Oh, Bengals Nation with Marvin Lewis. He's still around. He is. He still around, even though that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. If, no. that, that might be outdated, I'm, huh? Time to refresh. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not use that one. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully that doesn't uh, leave you questioning this media list that Marvin Lewis is on this uh, on this one. But anyways. Well, you only got 300 to sort through. So. <laughs> That's right. It should it Please should keep you more, Scott. <laughs> should keep you busy for a while, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, guys. Brian, anything from your perspective before we go? Uh, no. It's just uh great knowing that these resources are out there. So yeah, and, I uh, this is this was refreshing for me. I've been in the district for a few years now. Uh, just doing odd things here and there, but I, as I've never, I've been an area director and a division director, and never seen these. And I think it's really important to share the resources that we have within the district. With everybody. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, that's a real, that's a major part of the challenge of VP of P. I was a VP of PR at one time too, so it was yep. like, where do I send this stuff? Yeah. So this is fantastic. Yeah. So I think this is this is a great addition to our strategy uh, to get the word out, and and I think that yeah. there's some really good good opportunities here, but you just got to sort through what's best for you and your club. Yeah. So All real right. quick, Scott, sure. I don't know if I want to keep everybody for this. Um, Tyler and I have been talking about doing a, a webinar, uh, uh, an introduction to Toastmasters webinar for like a 15 minute thing. Okay. Instead of, you know, so it's like a, a, a step before coming to their first meeting. Um, oh, wow. So, um, you know, this, this might be an opportunity for some publicity. I don't know, but we'll probably just try to do it. Um, uh, organically with our own club but um any suggestions that well I, I just wanted to throw that out there to you in case that's something you want to pass on to other clubs yeah we haven't tried it yet this week is supposed to be our first one but uh and you know so as a as a thought uh for other people and then um i don't know if your uh you have any suggestions on that that's a very unique request, actually. I don't think that I've heard of a webinar or kind of an info session for somebody to 
prepare themselves before they actually come to a meeting. There, there might be some things out there that. Well, it's not to prepare does... them. It's to, it's, it's like instead of if they're not committed enough to come to a meeting to find oh. out what Toastmasters is about. Okay. It's an introduction. Just, you know, here's what we're about. This is what we do. Here's some of the results. Here's the pathways and uh, come to our next meeting. Is it specific to your club? Is the information specific to your club? Like the results that you have? Like, um, hey, we're a, we're a president's distinguished club or we're select distinguished club or something like that? Uh, some of it would be. Some of it would be general. Okay. So but we have. We aim at drawing people to our club. Yeah. So we have 20 members or or 25 members or something like that, which shows that you guys are pretty good in terms of membership. You guys have critical mass to to make it a good meeting. Well, we don't have 25, so. Oh, OK. <laughs> but that's a good point. That would be... Again, it would be something to highlight. <laughs> yeah. But. Well, good questions. Okay. I'll, I'll, I wrote it down. I'm going to see if there's something out there that I can help you with. I, nothing comes to my mind right off, right off the top, so, um, but I can keep that under advisement. Cool. Yeah, hey, uh, I so have another. Time. Yeah, go I ahead. Have a quick ahead. question if, if go you got the time. Sure, um, go ahead, Tyler. Apologies if I'm if I missed it, but is there a um, a general lead time for getting these out there that you would recommend? That's a good question. Um, I've heard. Uh, four weeks is probably a good planning horizon. I would say no less than two weeks, but I think the sweet spot is four weeks. And hopefully you've got some idea of what you're doing in terms of an open house about four four weeks ahead of time. I would not go less than two. If you're okay. ten, if, right. if you're ten days or seven to ten days, that's just not enough. Not enough time for planning, I think. But I would say two, preferably four weeks. Okay, perfect. That's exactly the info I was looking for. I, I'll, 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 I'll validate that, but I'm pretty sure it's two to four weeks. Okay, makes sense. Good Thank question. You. Sure, good question. All right, guys, uh, we're right here at 832. I really appreciate you guys joining. And like I said, I'm gonna make this available for uh, the people on at the district. These types of Wednesday webinar recordings and topics go on our YouTube channel. So that's another uh, uh, area for you to take a look at as a PR representative. We have a District 40 YouTube channel and you may even have one at the club level and that's great. Uh, we do have some educational videos out there and also some just informational videos out on our District 40 uh, Toastmasters YouTube channel. So check that one out. There, there's two of them there, but uh, the one that has more subscribers, there's probably, I think there's like maybe 150 to 200 subscribers. That's the one you want to get to. I think there's a YouTube channel that only has like 20. You don't want to get that one. The one that's bigger uh, is the one you want to take a look at. But these, the, this will go out on our YouTube channel uh, probably tomorrow morning sometime. Thanks for your cool. time, guys. I really appreciate uh, the questions and appreciate your attentiveness. Take care. Thank you. Have a great Thank evening. You, Thank Scott. You. Bye -bye. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome.